والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وكشف الله به الغمه وجاهد في سبيل ربه حتى اتاه اليقين فالله مجزيه عنا وعن والدينا وعن الاسلام والمسلمين خير ما جازيت به نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن امته، اللهم احينا على سنته وتوفنا على ملته واوردنا حوضه، واسقنا من يده الشريفه شربه هنيئه لا نطمع بعدها ابدا، ثم اما بعد my dear respected brothers and sisters, while we are in the middle of the election season and many are excited with the Pakistani um, uh, newly, newly elected uh, uh, government, uh, we have also to think and, um, about ourselves here in Michigan in the United States of America as we hope and pray for all Muslim leaders around the world to uh, fight corruption and to build a better future for the Muslim countries. We pray and hope that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them the wisdom, the courage, the tawfiq so that they can lead their communities to what's good in this life and life after. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, choose the best leadership for our um, Muslim uh, leaders around the world. But we have also to look at our affairs here in Michigan and in the United States. I just want to start by quoting two uh, stories familiar to everybody uh, before I talk about the importance of civic engagement. The story of Yusuf alayhi salam, are all familiar with the story of Yusuf, but one part of this story, when Yusuf alayhi salam, alayhi salatu salam was thrown in jail unjustly, you all know the story of the ladies who plotted against him. And he was absolutely innocent. But they decided to put him in jail for several years. Some said seven, some said nine years. He spent in jail. And here comes to him the messenger of the king, not Muslim, of course. In Egypt at that time was not a Muslim country. And the king, or the political authority who put him in jail, who committed injustice against him, needed help. The king saw a dream, and someone comes to Yusuf السلام, in his prison cell, telling him, Yusuf, we need your help. The king saw a dream, and nobody knows the interpretation of the dream. And we know, because this person actually was in prison with Yusuf, and he saw Yusuf, and he interpreted his dream before. So he told him, I know you can interpret the dream of the king. And the interpretation of the dream was that Egypt will face seven tough years of drought and they must have a good plan to save food to um, be able to um, um, overcome this drought. And the important point here is that Yusuf السلام, did not say, well, get me out of this prison first, then I will interpret your dream. He voluntarily, without asking for anything in return, he interpreted the dream and he told him that Egypt will face seven tough years Okay? And then this, you have to do this and that. And he told him what they need to do, not only interpret the dream, but he also told them what you need to do to save the Egyptian people, and not only the Egyptian people, but those who live around, like in Palestine, also in Jordan and surrounding um, countries, who used to come to take food from Egypt as the father and the family of Yusuf later came to get food from Egypt. He could have said, well, you put me in jail for several years, I've lost seven precious years of my life, and I will never do any service to you. I'm not going to help you. Get me out of here first, and you have to apologize and you know, compensate me for these years. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because he's a prophet, he interpreted the dream for free. And then when the king knew about this interpretation, he said, I want this man to come to me. I want him to help me. And here comes the messenger again to Yusuf السلام, in his prison and asking him to come and see the king. From prison to the palace, as Iqbal said. And Yusuf goes to the palace, stands before the king, and he told him what you need to do to avoid this drought. You have to you know, work for seven years and then get ready for the next seven tough years and then the relief will come. And not only that, Yusuf السلام, when the king liked his interpretation, Yusuf السلام, asked for a position. He said, make me in charge, put me in charge. 
of the Egyptian agricultural business. So I can, you know, execute this plan to save people from drought. He asked for a position. Not because he wants to get a good job or to build a good future, make a good career, but he wants to save the people, want to serve the people, who are not Muslim, by the way. And who want to save and serve the people who put him in prison. He asked for a position. And the ulama said, in this case, if you know you are qualified, you are the expert, you know how to serve people better than others, you can ask for a position. That's not haram to ask for a position. If you think you have the knowledge and you have the ability to serve people. So Yusuf السلام, said to the king, I'm alim, I'm an expert. I know how to do this. I have the knowledge. And hafiz refers to the amana. I have the amana, the akhlaq, the deen, and I have the qualification to do the service. Put me in charge of this. And the king did. And Yusuf became the minister of Egypt. And he did exactly what he promised. And he saved the people from this drought. Not only the people of Egypt, but the people who live around Egypt. And later on, his family came to seek food, and then, you know, he brought his parents and so on. The point I want to make here is that we as Muslims are people of principle. We are people of principle, of values. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about us, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhijat linnas. You have been the best ummah produced to serve mankind. Ukhijat linnas, for the people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this ummah by sending his revelation to the best of his Prophet وسلم, to produce the best way of life. And you, the followers of Muhammad وسلم, are or supposed to be the best example to all other communities, how to live your life, how to live ethical life. And here in Michigan, we have seen a lot of injustice going on, especially against minorities. We have seen the police violence against African American and Mexican. We have seen the inequality in payment. We have seen big corporations making a lot of money and many people in the middle class and low income are unable to seek medical treatment because they cannot afford health insurance. That's not fair. That's not justice. And for us as Muslims, and alhamdulillah most of us are doing well financially, but we also learn that we are responsible for what's happening not only directly to us but what also happened to others. As Rasulullah said that if you see evil, injustice, you have to change it. You have to do something about it. Don't say, you know, Alhamdulillah, I make good money and this issue is not my issue. The day will come and this injustice will come and devour us. As someone said, if you live in, in, a, in, in, in an apartment building and there's fire in the building, and then don't say, you know, my apartment is good, I'm fine. The fire eventually will come to you. You have to do something. You enjoy what's good and forbid what's evil. How to forbid evil? Yes, use whatever tools you have to forbid evil, to stop injustice, even if it happened to others, not directly to you. Rasulullah said, use your hand if you have the authority. If you don't, then use your tongue. Speak up. And if you cannot change it with your tongue, then change it within your heart. And as we live in a liberal democracy, we have our share in building this country. We pay taxes, we contribute in many different ways, and we have also rights. And for some reason, we as Muslims, especially here in the state of Michigan, we have a good number of Muslims in this country. I don't know why we don't come together and elect people that we think will serve our best interest. This is the way it goes. This is the way it goes. We want to be like Yusuf السلام, We think about serving people, serving justice and equality for all. Civic engagement is a must for us. There are three approaches for American Muslims when it comes to engaging the society. One is isolation. Some, unfortunately, are some Muslim movements are promoting this idea. Just don't care about everything. The most important to pray five times a day and to practice your, you know, rituals. And everything is haram over there. All these politicians are corrupt, and uh, 
you have nothing to do, just all what you need to do is to just come and pray and um, pay attention to your rituals, that's all. That's called isolation. And that is not an option for us. We cannot just isolate ourselves from the society and take from society what we can and give nothing in return or don't care about what happens. This is one approach. The other approach is the full assimilation. Exact opposite of the first approach, which is also wrong. To lose our identity, our values, and just to be part of the crowd and go with the crowd. Rasulullah said, don't do that. Don't do what everybody else is doing. To please others, to be part of the society, to be accepted. Do what others are doing and forget about your own identity, your own values and principles. Rasulullah said that. Don't be imma, don't go with the crowd. Have no opinion, no direction, no orientation, no principles or values. Stick to your values and principles. But Rasulullah said, when people do good, do good with them. And when people do bad, don't do bad things with them. And this is what Rasulullah practiced when he was 20 years old, 20 years before he became a prophet. There was something called Hilf al or the uh, pack of virtues. When four main tribes, including Bani Hashim and Bani Taim and Bani Zuhra and others, they came together and they said, we have to serve justice. When someone commits injustice in Mecca against anybody, whether from the citizens of Mecca or those who come for Hajj or Umrah. But sometimes people who come from big tribes, they feel comfortable wronging others. Merchants will come and buy and sell, and this man here from Quraysh, and he can take goods and does not pay, relying on the strength of his tribe. And this corruption starts spreading. And these four families of Quraysh, they came together in a house of a person with the name of Abdullah bin Juda'an, we still remember his name, because Rasulullah participated in this pact. He was part of it, the pact of virtues. And they made an agreement. Anybody suffers injustice, that we will stand for him and serve justice and give him his right. And Rasulullah said, I was so proud that I was part of this pact in the house of Abdullah bin Zayn, 20 years old, sallallahu alayhi wa And he said, if I am invited to something similar to this in Islam, I will respond. I'll be part of it. I'll be part of it. Anyone, any group of people come together to serve justice, to serve equality. We have to take part of this. Not just to wait and, and wait for someone to serve our cause. We have to be um, super active and take the initiative and do or use whatever tools we have to serve justice. So, brothers and sisters, this, is, as I said, is a, a season of election. And uh, it's time for us to participate. It's not an excuse to say that all these politicians are bad. There's no quote unquote Islamic agenda. This is something I also need to talk about. I am fully understand that no politician have a hundred percent Islamic agenda, because we are not even even those who run for election in hundred percent Muslim majority countries. They cannot have a hundred percent Islamic agenda because of the circumstances they have, the huge corruption they have. And I, I'm, when I was talking to some brothers yesterday about the Pakistani election, I said I'm cautiously optimistic, knowing that, knowing that, that even when honest and sincere leaders come, they have to face a tremendous amount of corruption that they themselves may not understand the depth of this corruption in every part of the state. In all institutions, when corruption becomes the norm, it will take time. Forget about this first hundred, day, hundred days, uh, he will do this and he will do that. It's not going to happen like this. It takes time and people have to help the government. If people like the government and they see the government going the right direction, they should help and support. Don't expect the government to do everything for them. So similarly here, we don't have a hundred percent Islamic quote unquote Islamic agenda. I fully understand this. Whether you vote Democrat or Republic, you have something you like here and something you like there, and you have something you dislike here and there. But if we look at 
our circumstances. We're living here in, in, in Michigan in 2018. We have to make our choice, not only in the election. We have to be active all year long, not only just go and vote and think that's it. That's civic engagement. That's a small part of it. That's a small part of it. Things work here when we lobby, when we put our effort together, when we go as a group. We can bring a change. And don't wait for, 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 for a quote-unquote 100% Islamic politician to come to serve our 100% Islamic cause. It's not going to happen like this. It takes time. It takes time. And we have to put pressure on politicians, whether they are running or they are elected. We have to always talk to them and express our needs and our concerns. It's not just voting, but voting is an essential part of this civic engagement. So I would encourage all of you not only to register, but to go and vote. And especially in the primary that's coming up on August 7th. I've heard that only 15% of the citizens vote in the primary. It's not that important. But we have to pay attention to these dates. We have to go and register and practice our constitutional rights. Whatever tools we have, let's vote for those we think that will serve justice to all and those who will stand for the rights of all, not only for the uh, wealthy corp uh, corporations. We have to make sure that we go out and vote and voice our opinion. Be part of any effort that serves peace and justice and equality and fight crimes and injustice. So I would highly encourage you as um, citizens of this country to use our rights and vote, and not only vote, but vote and be part of the civic engagement that we have to be part of. This is what Al-Qur'an wants us to do. Rasulullah did not establish a small community in Mecca, and they went and pray in Dar al-Arqam, in Nabi al-Arqam, and that's it. No, he's every day going knocking doors, talking to people. Talking to people, enjoying good and forbidding evil. There was another story when someone of these uh, uh, business people came to Mecca and he sold something to one of the elite of Mecca and he refused to pay him. And he went to find someone to give him justice and they told him, go to Muhammad. And the Rasulullah we all know, the first 13 years in Mecca was very tough. And he saw a sudden the man came to his house, knocked his door, said, oh, you know, I heard that you can get me my right. What happened? He told him what happened. He said, come with me. And he goes to Abu Jahl. And Abu Jahl, as we don't know, the worst enemy of Rasulullah And he knocked his door. And the people were waiting to see how... Can you help him just to turn it off? Right. And he saw some goes to Abu Jahl's house and told him, why are not giving this man his right? So said, okay, I will. And he went in and he gave him his right. And the two of us were very surprised. Abu Jahl, they expect Abu Jahl to be so tough and rude to the Prophet. And he said, they told him, well, why, why did you give him his right that easily? He said, Wallahi, I could not look at the face of Muhammad sallallahu So for some reason, this gravity of his personality and insistence in giving him his right, I could not resist. So there are so many other examples of how to be involved to serve justice. So, brothers and sisters, I would highly recommend that you register and go and vote in the primary, particularly in the primary, and of course in, in, in the election in November. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appoint the best leaders for us here and abroad. So, Allah Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allah. 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 الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ثم أما بعد um, tonight also we'll uh, witness uh, the moon eclipse right so it's going to be long and the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the sun of the moon
In Koyab Sudan, we pray what is known as Salatul Kusuf or Al Kusuf. So tonight, inshallah, after Maghrib, we'll have the uh, weekly lecture. And after Isha, we'll be praying, inshallah, this um, uh, Salatul Kusuf after Salatul Isha. Can pray with the knee of Qiyamul Layl and also Salat Al Kusuf after Salatul Isha tonight. So you're all invited, inshallah, to join us after Maghrib for the weekly lecture. We still study. Uh, the book of Imam Ghazali. And after Isha, inshallah, we'll pray this sunnah, sunnah Kusuf al Qamar, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al huda wa al tuqa wa al afaf wa al ghina. Allahumma inna nas'aluka rizqan tayyiban wa amalan mutakabbala. Allahumma aslah lana deenan alladhi huwa ismatu amrina. Aslah lana dunyana alladhi fiha ma'ashuna. Aslah lana akhiratana alladhi ilayha ma'aduna. Allahumma aj'al hayata ziyadata lana fi kulli khayr. Wa aj'al mawta rahatan lana min kulli shar. يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث فأصلح لنا شأننا كله اللهم لا تكن إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين ولا إلى أحد من الناس يا رب العالمين اللهم لا تدع لنا في جمعنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا عيبا إلا سترته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة لك فيها رضا ولنا فيها صلاح إلا قضيتها ويسرتها برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين اللهم إن نسألك الفردوس الأعلى من الجنة اللهم إنا نسألك الفردوس الأعلى من الجنة وغير سابقة عذاب ولا مناقشة حساب يا رب العالمين وأرحم الراحمين اللهم اشفنا واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وأرحم موتانا ومرضى المسلمين وانصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين ورحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم If someone can please just turn the fan on